It's a beautiful morning here in the southern mountains of Appalachia. Very cool this morning. When we got up, it was like 51. Felt so nice. Temperatures are forecasted to be up in the 80s, though, so the sunshine's already warming things up. We had several things on our chore list today that we wanted to get done in the garden. We've already completed some of them. Matt mostly has while I was inside washing up and uh, washing up the dishes and doing some other things that needed to be done. But now we're both going to kind of tackle one project that we wanted to do since last year. On the back side of our greenhouse, kind of where the woods come down, the bank comes down, uh, there's nothing uh, there. And last year when we were kind of looking around, we're always looking around to see where we could plant something else. Well, I thought about, well, what about on that back side of the greenhouse? That would be a good place for something like winter squash, melons, those kind of things that really run and just put them back there and let them, let them go, see where they go, see where they end up. Well, as far as we got last year was we put down some cardboard to kind of, uh, it's just red clay back there, but to kind of tamp down the weeds and cover them up. And then that's as far as we got. We didn't do nothing else. So, so we're finally this year going to try to complete that project. We're not going to really do anything elaborate, like maybe some of our raised beds where Matt would cut timber, cut logs out of the, cut a tr tree down and then cut it to lengths and surround it. We're kind of just going to, throw it together and see what happens. We're gonna put another layer of cardboard because that one from last year's kind of deteriorated as you might imagine over a whole year. And then we're gonna put some of our uh, compost on top of that, maybe add in some dirt. I've got some bags of soil that I have left over from my seedling when I started seedlings earlier. So we might add some of that. And then we're just gonna plant the seeds and see what happens. A lot of folks, you'll if you do a quick search, you'll find it, call these kind of quick gardens like that instant gardens. Uh, instant gardens. I wouldn't, I've never heard that term until I seen it uh, maybe in a video or maybe read it in a blog post or something like that. But it is kind of an instant garden if you think about um, in the old days, like when Pap was growing up or even when I was growing up, where people had to clear new ground, as we would say it, new ground, and then they would start them a garden in that. And that usually involved cutting down trees and getting stumps out, uh, all those kind of things, and then to begin plowing and then enriching your soil. So it was a, a huge process. So when you think about like the garden we're going to do today, it is kind of like an instant garden. Even though it's still work, you still have to do something. So I see why people come up with that, uh, with that name kind of to envelop what we're going to do today. And, and you could do it anywhere. You could go out in the middle of your yard and put down some cardboard and put some dirt on top of it and then plant something in it. And that would kind of be an instant garden. Much more instant kind of than what we're going to do because Matt's going to have to do some trimming uh, on the bank. And then we're going to you know get our loads of compost from that we keep uh, in the compost pile for where we clean out the chickens and other things so we'll have that so that'll that'll take more than an instant work but still it's pretty simple when you again go back to thinking about the days when pap was a boy when you had to really clear the new ground and then get the stumps out and then begin to actually plow of course in those days they didn't have uh, fancy tillers like we do today if you are going to actually till up the ground they were doing it with a plow and maybe a mule or oxen so while our new ground is really just kind of simple when you think about in comparison to that, I'm still excited that we're finally going to get this bed done, even though we've wanted it took us over a year to do it. We started it last year, never completed it. So I'm really excited that today's going to be the day that we're going to finish it. Another good part about working on it right now is, like I said, the sun's beginning to come out and warm, but we're kind of still on the shady side. So this is a good time of the day to tackle, tackle making that bed. Uh, I love, I was back here in the weeds looking around, and if you've gardened for many years like we have and had flowers and maybe even just have an established um, yard that you take care of, things will often appear in different places. So this, I've noticed this last year and maybe even the year before, but you can see right here is uh, some beautiful blooms of the, it's a blackberry, it's a tame blackberry. Now, of course, I didn't plant it in the middle of this <laughs> conglomeration of uh, brush pile weeds and brush that's growing on the bank. I didn't plant it there. I don't remember how it got there. I don't I don't know if a bird dropped the seed, if somehow I accidentally pulled up a portion of it that I had in another place in the yard and and kind of threw all my, I, I will often, if I'm cleaning in the yard weeding, I will throw up on this bank or off the bank in the front of the house. And so maybe that's how it happened, but it's kind of a nice surprise back here in this shady part. I probably should try to dig part of it up and put it with our other blackberries, but I probably won't. I'll probably just leave it right here. It's boring. Well, I 
guess you should learn not to eat the eggs. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Join forces. What was that? Wonder Twins? Wonder Twin powers. Activate. Yeah. <laughs> and we ended up having twins. They wore purple outfits, didn't they? Mm -hmm. I always liked Aquaman. Yeah. Except I was always afraid he would drown. Well, that's stupid. He's Aquaman. I know, but I still got to worry for him. Say that I will. Come on. Well, the sun caught up with us, but we finally finished, even though we had to finish in the sun. We got two or three little minor interruptions and um, had to help Granny do something over the phone and then had to do one or two other things. So we didn't do it as quick as we thought, but the main thing is we got it done, right, Dad? Yep. Once it starts getting real hot, it's the harder it gets for me yeah. anyway. 
makes the shade feel so much better. So mm -hmm. good. Shade is a miraculous thing. Yep. So what we ended up planting was really kind of the same stuff that we've got planted in other parts of the yard. Um, we planted, and we probably planted too much, that's what Matt would say. I always plant too much. I squeeze it all in the smallest place, but I can't resist. But we planted a couple of Chambers Creek pumpkins, uh, some candy roasters, love candy roasters, some butternut uh, squash, those are so great for saving. Uh, we still have some in our kitchen that's from last year that we need to eat. I planted two watermelons, uh, Georgia rattlesnakes. That's a really big watermelon. Uh, they never do good for us. But And I told Matt when I went in to get the seeds, I said, I'm only going to do winter squash, right? Because the watermelons won't do no good. And he's like, yeah, they never do any good. Let's don't plant any. <laughs> and then I planted some. I can't resist. I love watermelon. Also, the golden midget watermelon. That one we've grew before, so that one will probably do better than the rattlesnake. I just keep dreaming that I can grow those great big ones, but I know I can't. And then I grew two, or planted, we planted two spaghetti squash. I think we've grew them in the past, haven't we? But it's been a couple of years. Yeah, we've grown yeah, them. But we've not grown them in several <coughs> years. I think Katie got me those for Christmas. So that's what we ended up planting. So kind of talking about how I can't resist sticking stuff here or there. I inherit that from Granny. That's how she is. Uh, she used to drive Pap and Matt crazy in his big garden because she'd go behind them and plant stuff here and there. Yeah, and we didn't know it was there. And didn't know it was up. there. And then it'd get all tangled up and it was just a mess. Uh, so I guess I'm guilty of that too. But it's when you see a little piece of soil there, you just can't resist making sure that you put something. And of course, in this time of the year, it's getting things are filling out but when you're first planting it just looks like you've got so much room but then of course when the plant starts actually growing and thriving you don't have as much room as what you thought you did but I never remember that I just plant them plant them anyway and then we have to deal with the jungle mm -hmm. but that desire to plant stuff everywhere everywhere you see a bare spot kind of goes along with the people that call it an instant garden so if it's like I was saying before, and there's all kinds of videos you can watch um, that just do a search for an instant garden, you'd find one. But where people would just lay up, you know, some cardboard. Some people don't even, they get a bag of garden, like potting soil, and just rip the top open and, and grow directly in the bag. So there's all kinds of tricks like that. It, um, we would call, like what we did today, we made a little, that was new ground, even though we started the new ground last year, but new ground that we started another little patch, garden patch. So I guess that's our winter squash slash melon patch now. Uh, it's just a very small one. But you can kind of see how those kind of those two thoughts of the instant garden and then wanting to use every little space you have kind of go hand in hand. And for people that don't garden all the time, it is just, whether it's a squash seed or a, a melon seed, the watermelons, the reason the watermelons don't do good for us is because we don't have enough sunshine. We don't get a full, like what, nine hours of sun? Right. What would you say, we get like six, seven? Yeah. Maybe, depending on what part of the yard it is. So that's the main problem with the melons for us. Um, is that, and they do grow, the plant grows, it's just that they don't ever get big, that big size that uh, I dream about, the kind that you see at the produce stands. Anyway, but you can kind of see those kind of those two thoughts kind of go hand in hand, the ease of making an instant garden, and then that desire to absolutely use every little inch of soil that you have available to grow something. And the reason I think that works so many times, even when Granny was, you know, aggravated Pap and uh, Matt from putting stuff in different places in the garden and not telling them where they'd already planted something, is because every plant, every little seed has this innate desire to grow. That's what it wants to do. It really wants to grow. So it's, it's wonderful to have, like, you know, the perfect soil and the perfect amount of rain and all that kind of stuff, but for usually a lot of times that don't happen the weather doesn't cooperate with you or or maybe you're like us and have red clay soil 
and even back there the bed we built today we could could have certainly took more pains we could have made the you know made it deeper if we were following like a textbook we would have made it the soil deeper we would have had more compost we would have took greater pains with it um, but a lot of times you can kind of just try your best and the seed grows because it's just the miraculous thing about it it wants to grow and the plant actually when it starts growing it wants to produce whether it's a watermelon or a tomato or a winter squash or whatever it, there's really an innate desire in it to grow that's its job it's living its best life <laughs> while it does that during the summer so so I think our, our garden because of all that our little patch new patch that we made today I think it'll do okay it will yeah so we hope you kind of enjoyed coming along with us as we did our latest garden project, our new bed that's literally took us a year to do. We started last year and never completed it. Um, and as always, we hope you'll drop back by often to help us celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot about making a garden. I don't think I connected all my points, what I was trying to say. You did good. Huh? You did good. I didn't, and I can interrupt myself like Billy Ray does and say, oh, friends, right here, mm -hmm. I was trying to explain that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it because this interview's over. <laughs> it wasn't even an interview. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got your cool rag on? Wet. Keep my head cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>